this is magnificent. Wow. Way up at the tip top of Alaska, an airplane can feel like a time machine. You see him there? There's a bunch of little babies running around. Because the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, commonly known as ANWR, is the kind of pure wilderness most of America paved over long ago. Oh, this is it. We are in the heart of the Arctic Refuge. Welcome to one of the last truly wild places on Earth. The coastal plain brims with life, from musk oxen to bears, both grizzly and polar. Birds that will migrate to the backyards of all 50 states. But as Florian Schulz has captured over the years, the most common creature is the caribou. And not just a few, but hundreds of thousands. The kind of herd unseen since the plains buffalo were wiped away. And when Florian is here with his family, he can't help but wonder how long it will last. We need to keep some of these places untouched. We are changing the world everywhere so fast, but why not leave a few places unspoiled? For almost 60 years, that was the rationale that protected Anwar from this. These are the oil fields of Prudhoe Bay that fill the famous pipeline and power countless lives. But since there are billions of barrels elsewhere, Nature lovers have long argued there is no need to drill here. And for decades, that argument held. Until... One day, a friend of mine who's in the oil business called, is it true that you have Anwar in the bill? I said, I don't know. Who cares? What is that? He said, well, you know, Reagan tried. Every single president tried. I said, you got to be kidding. I love it now. And after that, we fought like hell to get Anwar. He talked me into it. December's tax cut bill also opened Anwar to drilling, thanks to Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski, who slipped in the provision, knowing that it would only need 51 instead of 60 votes to pass. It is wrong for those from the outside looking in who have taken a nice trip into an area and said, this must be protected. But conservationists point out there is already a huge glut of American oil. And oil companies are laying people off up here, right? Because prices are so low. Oil companies have been laying people off. And, you know, for the first time in the last five years, I was seeing more oil company workers leaving the state of Alaska and going to places like North Dakota yeah. than, than coming into the state. But much like Trump's efforts to revive dying coal mines, the rush to drill here seems driven more by politics than economics. Former Speaker of the House Tom DeLay once said, if we could drill in Anwar, it'll break the back of the environmental lobby. Well, they haven't, they haven't drilled in Anwar yet. We know that the Arctic regions are heating twice as fast as any other part of the world, and it just makes zero sense to come here and look for more oil that's just going to exacerbate that problem. And among those opposed is the Gwich'in Nation, the northernmost tribe of Native Americans. How many people live here? About 150 around. Wow. I think about 150 people live on my floor of my apartment building. <laughs> Their numbers may be tiny, but they are definitely not outsiders. Archaeological evidence shows we've been here over 25,000 years. And the only reason they survived is caribou. Back in the day, they would trap the animals in these handmade corrals. These days, they use guns and snowmobiles, but still need the animals to survive in one of the most expensive neighborhoods in America. Groceries at the Midnight Sun can cost twice as much as the Whole Foods in Manhattan. Gasoline up here runs $10 a gallon. But still, given the choice between oil money and caribou, there is no debate. These folks will stick with the one animal that has kept them alive for thousands of years. And they cannot imagine drills and trucks and pipelines across what they call the sacred place where life begins. Look what happened to the Plains Indians and the buffalo. Yeah. That's not going to happen to my people. We're not going to allow that to happen again. Just to the Gwich'in, they are a Native American David against a Goliath of oil companies, Republican lawmakers, and the Inupiaq coastal tribe of native Alaskans, eager to drill and cash in. Now that the U.S. is saying we can finally do this, now we have the other side, the environmentalists saying we can't do this. What's wrong with this picture? 
As the government rushes towards development, community meetings lay bare the fight, tribe versus tribe, neighbor against neighbor. We have thousands of gallons discovered in places that have already seen disruption, but restraint is what we lack. When did we all become owners of the land? It has always owned us. Bill Weir, CNN, Cactovic, Alaska. Thank you.